Hey everybody, this is Brian. If you're following along, this is video 15 in our HTML tutorial. Today we'll be discussing forms. Um, as you can see, I've already got some code written. We have the start of our form and the end of our form. And in this tutorial, we're going to kind of pick this apart and explain what exactly this is and why you need it. Okay, first off, a form is an area of the page that allows you to get user input. You've seen it a million times, for example, when you go to Google and you do a search, you're using a form. Let's go ahead and make like a very simple search feature. You notice I'm starting with input and then I'm adding attributes to this. This type is text, which means it'll be a text box. The name, well, you can give it any name, but we're just going to call it search. The size is how large it will display. Um, in this case, it'll be 30 characters. And the value is the initial value that it will have. Save our work. And let's flip over to our web page. And you see there's our text box, and the user can tag. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not text. <laughs> I was thinking about my phone. The user can search in this text box. Now, it's not very uh, functional, it's just a text box. So what we need to do is add other inputs. Now, if you're wondering what type submit equals, um, think of how you would get this information from point A to point B. You have to submit the information or, as I'll explain in a minute, you have to post it. Save our work. Five, whoops, appears I've made a boo-boo. As you can see, I forgot the double quotes. Let's go back and fix that real quick. All right, there you go. Now here is our text. Let's say we want to search for dinner because I'm hungry. And we have a search button. Now when you click this, what do you think is going to happen? Well, not much really. You click it and it'll say this form is being submitted by email. Well, that's not really the results we wanted. So let me go through and explain what's going on here. Here's our form. Inside of our form we have inputs. Inputs allow the user to enter data or input data. We have to send the data, the input, somewhere using a method. In this case we're posting the data. You don't really need to understand what a post is at this point. Just understand that you're moving the data from point A to point B. Post is simply the underlying HTTP protocol. Action. This is how you're going to get the data from point A to point B. In this case, we're going to mail to and then just an email address, me at home.com. Now, typically, you would either mail the form, in this case it would you know, go to an email address, or you would send it to another page. And in the other page you would have code, not HTML unfortunately, you would be using uh, server-side code typically to pull the information off and put it into a database. We're not quite there in our tutorials yet, so just follow along on the forms. Inside the form we have inputs. Here you see we have the start of an input, the attribute type is text, the name is search, the size is 30 characters, the value is search here. You can put whatever you want in there. You can even omit the value, but you know, it's good form to just blank it out if you want just a blank area. See? Now in this point, if you were to hit the search button, flip back to your code, what do you think is going to happen? Take a second. Okay, if you guess that we're going to post this data to page two, you're correct. Let's go ahead and try that and see what happens. Well, absolutely nothing. If you remember, page two is from our previous tutorials. The data did get posted, but we don't have any code in page two to process that. I know this was pretty confusing, and we're going to visit on some key parts of forms here in the next couple tutorials. I want to really spread this out and explain this in depth because it's a very big part of what web designers do nowadays. Um, 
I thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video educational and entertaining.